Thank you very much, Asanda, for your time. Let's talk about the event itself first. Parents claim that the way the event was advertised through WhatsApp groups meant that the invites didn't reach black or colored students and that they weren't intentionally left out. But that, that raises serious questions about diversity and inclusion amongst both parents and students. Yes, I think, uh, you know, the, the excuse that has been given is about the WhatsApps, but uh, what it does sort of show us is that at the school, there actually isn't enough integration amongst parents, because if there was, then they would have gotten the, the WhatsApp uh, messages, and it wouldn't have been just, you know, white uh, students who ended up at this particular event. And I think that it also, again, shows a clear lack of friendship or not enough friendship, if there are, between the black students, the colored students, and the white students. Because again, if there was friendship, then surely friends would have spoken to each other about such a big event that's happening at school and that is that is uh, you know mainly organized by the school community, even if it's not officially organized by the school. So as you've said there, this event wasn't uh, organized by the school. It was privately organized by parents and held at a private venue. So there's no legal action that can be instituted against the school in relation to this event. But why is the EFF protesting outside the school now? And, and what do you make of their tactics? And I'm asking this specifically in relation to, to other claims of racism at the school not related specifically to this incident. Well, I mean, I think that the EFF is basically putting itself forward as racism police. That's the sort of role that they have modeled out for themselves. And I think that they've seen that it works in terms of garnering support from from black parents instead of garnering support from black people in general and showing them to be people who actually care and are actually doing something in an era where many parents and many black people in general are just struggling with the dire lack of consequences, the dire lack of actions against racism across South African society. So I think that, you know, it, it's very much on brand for the EFF to have been outside of the school because they've done this with clicks. Uh, they were there in Senegal when, uh, you know, the farmers started attacking police and overturning vans. And they've been there for many, many other incidents before. One that springs to mind uh, right now is H&M. And, and, you know, when H&M had its big blunder, they were also there. So I think this is on brand and the EFF has basically modeled itself uh, to be these racism uh, warriors. The question, though, that, that keeps ringing in my mind is that, yes, it's good, and it's important for, you know, South Africans to feel like they have somebody who represents them and somebody who's going to take up these cases against racism. However, what happens when the EFF is no longer following only what the public wants? What happens when the EFF has a personal gripe and they start to use this power that they have and use this ability to just get crowds gathered outside of places that they have decided are no longer uh, following the guidelines that they want to be followed. And so it's good and well now because, you know, they are following cases that people are interested in and they are seemingly bringing about more action than there was before on the issue of racism. But we don't know what's going to happen when the EFF no longer follows, you know, uh, the, the public in terms of direction on where to go. And so I think that there is some accountability that needs to be in check. I think there needs to be some some power that's in check. But I think also what this whole thing is telling us is that there's a death of, of unions in South Africa because this is the role, of course, that unions used to play. They used to be quite good at, at showing up in places where oppressed people were feeling marginalized and oppressed people were feeling unrepresented. And if we're seeing the EFF now slowly taking over this role because Kosatu is no longer doing what it used to be and the other unions are not as strong, as they used to be. And I think also what it's showing us is that our government has failed us and is failing people to, to a point where the EFF has become the, the go-to point for issues like racism, whereas people should be going to the police to report criminal cases. People should be going to you know various instruments of the law that actually exist from the HSRC to the Equality Court and many others that are actually supposed to be there for people, but people are going to the EFF to get these things sorted it out, which tells me that government isn't seen to be doing and government isn't doing enough. And that's something that government needs to look into. But I think also I want to warn that, you know, 
we cannot be in a situation where particularly white parents or white people in general feel that they have the right and the authority to attack people because a video that I saw showed a very peaceful person who was doing nothing except wearing an EFF hat at that point who was actively attacked. And I think that we must condemn this kind of, uh, you know, vigilantism and retaliation against people whose opinions we don't agree with. Absolutely. I think the, the situation could have been handled very different, differently by all those involved, from the parents and the school right through to those uh, protesting outside the school. Uh, thank you very much for your time. That was Asanda Ngwasheng, a diversity expert.